the book of Joshua, chapter number six. Two passages of scripture will draw our attention this afternoon. Now I must tell you that as I begin the message that we had a time with this at eight o'clock. And though this is not our women's day, I have been commissioned to speak to the women on today. Uh, I trust that the gentlemen will be blessed as well, but it is my intention. Joshua 6 verses 1 through 5 and then 6 verses 22 through 25. It is my intention to obey God as it relates to speaking to the women. Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. When you have it, will you signify by saying amen? amen? You listen and I'll read. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And you shall compass the city, all ye men of war. And go round about the city once, thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall come past the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Verses 22 through 25. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house. Hmm. And bring out thence the woman and all that she have, as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in, and brought out Rahab, and her father, and her mother, and her brethren, and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred, and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire, and all, what, all that was therein, only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive hmm. and her father's household and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. <laughs> Now, occasionally you come to church and you make the sad mistake of sitting or standing beside the wrong person. You can tell when you made that mistake because they don't want to talk. They don't want to hit your neighbor. They, they, you know, and they can mess up the atmosphere and on the whole row. Now, if you made that sad mistake, there's a way to correct it. And that is when you charge your environment and charge your space so that no evil demonic influences or spirits. So don't pass me no notes and don't ask me no questions. I'm going to get a blessing up in here today one way or, or the other. Charge your atmosphere by looking at your neighbor. Doesn't matter which side. You're going to talk to the other one in just a moment and say, neighbor. This afternoon, afternoon. co-pastor co is going to talk about a woman, a woman. With, with potential. Talk to the neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor, I'm getting ready to hear about a woman who has potential. Get those hands up and signify. Because sometimes the devil will make you think it's all over for you. But throw those hands up and say, Satan, I serve you notice. 
this. You gave it your best shot. And I'm still here. Because I have potential. Say ah! oh. Y'all sit down. Let's work it out. Don't count me out yet. Let's work it out. <laughs> Yee, help me, Jesus. I must admit from the onset of this discussion with you today that in my 40 or so some years of preaching, I have only had one other occasion other than today to preach about Rahab. Somehow her story just did not intrigue me enough for me to pay attention to see if there was something that could be extracted from her text life to give credence for the life that we now live and serve as a catalyst of some sort to bring us to a new level in God. However, <laughs> I am confident that the Holy Spirit can lead and guide us into new arenas of truths, even if those stories or biblical narratives are not familiar to our ear. That being said, let's begin. Unlike other well-known Bible sheroes, Rahab emerges on the scene through her disgusting occupation. Mm -hmm, I'm going to help somebody stay with me. She is not famous because of her political strategies that saved the nation as was Esther's plight. She's not remembered because of her impeccable character, as is the dialogue in the book of Ruth about Ruth. She's not portrayed as a woman whose military accomplishments places her on the roster of the who who military giants in Israel, as was Deborah's fate. Hmm. She's not applauded as a woman of spiritual dignity, as in Hannah's case, when she prayed for years for God to give her a child. Instead, <laughs> Rahab, enters the scene as one of the top three Old Testament Bible bad girls. You know the bad girls. She hails among the top three. Jezebel. That old wicked queen who caused Israel to slump into arenas of idolatry. You, you know them. Delilah, that old slut. Don't get afraid. I'm going I'm to remain with the integrity of the text. Who taunted and teased and tricked Samson into divulging his secret, which was also his strength. You know, she's listed among the top three. Rahab, the harlot, uh, the whore, who comes on to the scene because of her livelihood. <laughs> but unlike her other two colleagues, Rahab does perform some good deeds. And perhaps if one, could ever get over her day-to-day -day occupation, <laughs> there may be something noteworthy and honorable about her life. <laughs> 